Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in. Today I'm gonna to be talking about a long road trip experience that I recently had during COVID. I did this trip right before the spike in cases. I had to go see some family members from Aurora, Colorado, all the way to Des Moines, Iowa, and then I also visited Cincinnati, Ohio, and then Columbus, Ohio. Today's video, I'm gonna be talking about lessons learned, how the trip went, any tips and tricks that I have for you if you are going to be making a trip in your Tesla Model 3. My Tesla Model 3 is a mid-range. It is rated for 260 some miles. It's almost a two-year-old car. So I had some thoughts while I was driving along the way, uh, things that I should have planned and whatnot. So I wanted to share with you all of that experience to make your road trips better. I'll cover the range anxiety, I'll cover things like autopilot, and I'll also talk about in great detail supercharging, the supercharging cost, my overall supercharging experience in this video. If you're new here, I make videos on Tesla tips and tricks, cover all software update, and variety of other Tesla topics. So if you would like to see more videos in the future, please consider subscribing to my channel. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. I appreciate your time. Let's get it started. Let's just get something obvious out of the way. Travel time. No matter how fast the V3 chargers might charge, you're always going to get to your destination later than a typical ICE car. So that, like you have to accept the fact that eight hours might turn into 13 hours because you have to make certain stop to charge your vehicle. My mindset whenever I'm on a road trip in a Tesla is rather than thinking about when am I gonna get there, I think about I'm gonna enjoy this ride, I'm not gonna have range anxiety, I want to try to get to my destination in a better mindset, more relaxed than I would driving a typical ICE car. So that was my mentality going. I made frequent stops whenever necessary just so that I was more relaxed and I enjoyed my ride along the way. Let's talk about autopilot. I think autopilot did a really good job. Uh, I still get a little bit nervous whenever uh, I'm passing big trucks. I want to take over because I'm so scared because it looks so close. But you know, the, the ride was smooth. I feel like the autopilot is much more confident than uh, previous road trip experience that I had. It did the navigate and autopilot perfectly. It did the lane change and everything. Uh, so it, it is really good. One thing I did want to say is it's so annoying. I think that's the most annoying Tesla features I, I think there is, is that instead of going and hugging the left lane, it kind of tried to center every time. So there's a merging lane. It tries to center so that it kind of moves out of the way like a drunk driver. And I just hate that feature, hope that new, um, the full self-driving software that is coming will fix that feature after all. Another thing is that every time it made a lane change, it wanted to go back to that right lane right away. So it was so quick on getting back to the right lane. I didn't want it to change the setting to stay on that passing lane, the left lane, but I wish Tesla waited for a little bit longer before it started giving the blinker to go into the right lane. But overall, Autopilot did a really good job. I had this experience in Illinois where a police car was following me, not from the back, but kind of levels in the side. So it was going a parallel with me. And then that, that went on for like five minutes or so. And then I finally kind of picked over to see like if he was gonna pass or not. And then he, he kind of looked at me too. And I think what he was checking was making sure I wasn't falling asleep uh, driving an autopilot, uh, which was really funny. Uh, Kind of a weird experience that i had i wanted to share with you all one thing that i would say is if you have the in in the emergency lane the lane avoidance um, in autopilot setting if you have it in assist there might be certain situation where because of the road work you might have to drive outside of a lane and it was trying to pull me back into the lane but because of construction i had to drive outside of the lane so if you have that in assist maybe i recommend changing that to just alert uh, so that it is not trying to pull you all the time through the construction zones but as i said test uh, autopilot did a great job navigating autopilot worked really well other than some of those minor bugs one more thing is I feel like autopilot also helps you save on your battery because it is more stable. 
uh, versus me trying to drive especially in situations where there is a traffic there's a stop and go traffic i feel like autopilot does a really good job of kind of maintaining that battery level it's not going crazy so i think autopilot also helped on that sense of giving me the maximum regenerative braking and then also keeping the car at that stable level now let's talk about range i mean range anxiety is real i get those while i'm on a trip so what i normally do is i give myself a 15 percent range buffer from each charger especially if i know there's not going to be a charger before i reach my destination or before i reach the next charger that tesla is telling me to charge when you plug in your tesla at a supercharger it tells you you know five minutes to continue to your trip if you have a trip on your navigation that is great i feel like tesla gives you around 10 percent of a buffer to reach your destination but what Tesla doesn't know are all the road conditions, the wind condition, and any detour you might have to take. So giving yourself a 15% buffer, I feel like it's a safe approach. I mean, that is just my personal preference. I like to give myself 15% buffer so that I don't have that range anxiety all the way until I reach my destination. I also recommend you use the energy graph instead of just going off of what Tesla tells you on that mileage on top because that energy graph is much more accurate representation of how much range that you might have uh, given how much energy that you have been using to drive your car. So if you're going fast, uh, that changes. So I recommend using the energy graph uh, on your car instead of just going by what the rated range is on your mileage. You can just let your car navigate to your destination. You don't really have to use any third party planning apps and whatnot if you just want to get to your destination based on what Tesla recommends. But if you do use those third party app like a better route planner, the EV trip planner, supercharge.info, it might help you fine tune your experience a little bit more. You can change settings more than what Tesla allows you in their trip planner to change setting. Let's just quickly look at uh, EV trip planner, for example. Let's look at the EV trip planner website here. So if we go to route energy planner, I can put the starting address, Denver, Colorado, to and then we can just put route through superchargers. So it's showing which supercharger I should take. And then here you can add, actually adjust. So a speed multiplier, right? So you wanna, you wanna say you go 1.05, whatever multiplier you want, you normally go if you like to go five over, you can change that. You can change the Kevin temperature. You can change the exterior temperature. You can even put your current payload and then the wind, so you can put wind as a consideration here and then the initial battery charge. So it gives you a little bit more flexibility as to some of the settings if you want to uh, utilize those. And here it says we don't have to take this charger, but if we say you wanna charge here in council buffs, we can just change that and then it will, it will adjust where to charge accordingly. And it ad uh, also adjusts the time and everything. Speed. Speed has a direct effect on your battery range and how much range you are gonna get out of your battery. Higher the speed, lower range you are going to get. And when you look at the Tesla's estimated range that the Tesla shows you, it is going to show based on how fast you are going on that 30 mile window or 15 mile or five mile, however you do it, that's the average range that you're gonna see. EPA rated range for Model 3s are based on 18 inch wheels and also going 65 miles per hour. And you know on most highways, you are gonna want to go a little bit higher than 65 miles per hour. Or if you have 19 inch wheels, then you are going to get less range. So just keep that in mind while you're looking at the Tesla's rated range of how far you can travel per charge. But if you are ever in a situation where you feel like you are not gonna make it to your destination given the, given the charge level that you have in your car, you can always go lower speed and then that significantly again helps. Chill mode, this is probably very debatable because there is not a lot of data to show that chill mode really helps with your range. It, I personally feel like it does because you're not needing that instant power boost to get to that speed limit. So if you're starting at a lower speed limit, you're merging on a highway and you need to go to that high speed limit, it doesn't 
doesn't do it very rapidly it kind of slowly does it gradually where you get to your speed limit i feel like that you know helps with your battery range it also helps if you have passenger in your car that get motion sickness easily turning on chill mode is also beneficial for that purposes I also recommend using the heated seats instead of turning on heater in your car because turning on heater significantly reduces your battery range in the winter time. So what I find it helpful is when I turn on those seat heater, it provides me with enough heat. Me and my passengers, it's really nice that we can turn on seat heaters on all front and back passengers. So that really helps. Uh, and just minimizing using the cabin heater as much as possible will conserve on battery range. Let's talk about supercharging. If you have never supercharged before, this is Tesla's fastest network where it lets you charge really, really fast and what you use for your road trips. You don't have to swipe a credit card or debit card at the supercharging station. In fact, there is no place for that. All you have to do is pull up to a supercharger and plug in your car. The payment method that you use to order your Tesla will be the default payment method, but you can also change the payment methods and just charge a different card and let's quickly look at how you can do that because this is a pretty common question that I get on how to change that payment method. To change your payment method for the supercharger all you have to do is go into your Tesla account and then go over here in account and this page shows up where there is your contact information and if you scroll down right here it says manage payment account this is where you can edit removed add your payment account for your and the safety of other tesla drivers i would highly recommend using disinfecting wipes to grab on the supercharger handle and then also the cable before and after you use your supercharger that really really helps you know not spread the virus especially during this crazy COVID times as i said before it might be beneficial to use third party supercharging apps um, and EV planning such as supercharge.info because they provide you with user experience. People have talked about, you know, avoid this charger or do this when you are at this charger. The reason I say that is because not all chargers are the same. Some chargers, the V3 chargers can charge up to 250 kW, but then there are the normal chargers, the regular chargers that charge 150 kW. And then there are some chargers that only charge 75 kilowatt. So it depends on which charger, which location you visit. The chargers might be different and you might get different charges while you get there. The speed might be different. Another thing is some chargers are super easy to find. You just drive, it's open parking lot, it's easy, you can spot them, you go charge. But then there are some really difficult locations where you have to go through a garage, you have to get a little parking ticket, and then you go over there and you have to kind of go up couple of floors sometime to find the chargers and it's really in the tight spaces so just keep that in mind that not all chargers are in in an area where you can find it and sometimes you even have to pay for for parking over there and then you know you get to that location and it's not easy where the restrooms are which wi-fi you can use and some situation especially if you're gonna do an over night driving some of those locations might not be open so the restrooms might not be open and you might have to end up using a regular rest area that the normal cars used uh, to go to the bathroom i have had that happen a couple of times because i was doing a lot of night driving and the businesses weren't open so that is something you have to keep in mind and and plan your trip accordingly that that's why i i recommend you look at you know, quickly look at each of those charging stations that you're going to be using along the way and get an idea of, you know, is it the, is the business that are going to be open or not during the time you're going to arrive at that charger. It, it really helps plan your trip that way. Shared charging. When you arrive at a supercharger, you have to kind of think about where you are going to plug it in. If it is an empty supercharger and you're the only one, great. You don't have to think about anything. You just plug it in. But then if there are superchargers where there are other people already there, then you have to take into account the numbering on supercharging. Superchargers are normally numbered as A and B. So there's one A, one B, but they're not always at the same place. So it's not just one A, one B. It could be one A, two A, three A, and then one B would be kind of further apart. So just, you have to keep that in mind. That is important because A and B share the same charger. That means you're gonna split the the power that you're getting from that charger that means your charging time is going to be higher if there is a car parked on 
plugged in on A as well as N circuit B. So if that does happen, then just know that the, the, the charging speed for the A is going to decrease and then you are also not going to get the full charging speed because you are, you are sharing that charger. And sometimes you do have to do that because some of the charging stations are really busy. I ran into a situation in Des Moines, Iowa where I had to wait in line because all the charging spaces were full. So I had to wait for somebody to come out. And in that situation, I did have to share the charge because it, I had to plug it in right next to somebody else in that same circuit. Charging temperature. As I said before, always navigate to a supercharger so that it can start warming up your battery and even tells you that it's warming up the preconditioning the battery to charge at an optimal temperature. So lower temperature will affect how fast your battery can charge. This also goes to if you're gonna stay at a hotel overnight with a supercharger, what I would recommend is charging your vehicle as soon as you get to the hotel and not waiting till the morning to charge your car because overnight the temperature could drop. That means your charge is your car is going to charge at a slower rate than it would if you just arrive at the destination. Your battery is still warm. So I would, I would recommend doing that instead of waiting till the morning. Let's talk about the supercharging cost. But before I do that, I wanted to say special thanks to Alexander and Amarnath for using my referral link to purchase your Tesla. I got 1000 miles of free supercharging for both of your referrals so I really appreciate that. I only had that one the, the first 1000 miles for this trip that I'm talking about today. So it got me all the way from you know Denver Colorado area all the way to Ohio with that free 1000 mile supercharging and then I had to pay coming back. It really helps. So if you enjoy watching my videos and if you are considering purchasing a Tesla, please use my referral link. You and I both would get 1000 miles of free supercharging and really, really helps for these road trips. With that, let's, let's look at my supercharging screen and how much I paid for the trip. And I'm also going to share my experience about the, the tier pricing, which I did not know that there are different pricing for different kilowatt charge so i'm gonna share all of that with you let's 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 look at my screen for supercharging to pull that up you have to go to your history and then when this pulls up as you can see it has all the cost and if we do view all i can go all the way down to this trip so 10 15 is when i took that trip and here it says zero dollars and that is because I had that free supercharging miles, uh, the thousand supercharging miles, which is 800 kilowatt hour. So all of the zeros are because I had those supercharging miles. Now in West Cincinnati, Ohio, that's when I uh, had to pay for the supercharger and that's when my miles expired. So they charged me for 28 kilowatt hour. It was 26 cents per kilowatt hour, nothing out of ordinary. Throughout Ohio, I saw that was the case. But let's see what happens as soon as we hit Indiana, something changes. Now all of a sudden there is this tier pricing. So there is power tier one, 10 minute, and then power tier two, 18 minutes. So they were charging based on how much power we're using and how many minutes were there. So I started looking into what this tier pricing was. And when I go to Tesla's website and supercharging support, Tesla says that when possible, owners are billed per kilowatt hour, you know, which is the most fair. But in other cases, we have to bill by per minute. So what that per minute is, is if you charge, if your car is charging at or under 60 kilowatt, then you're, you are automatically put into the tier one category. But then if your car is charging above 60 kilowatts, so you are getting the full 150 kilowatt, then you are charged at tier two, which is double the cost per minute of tier one. So if your car is relatively empty and you are getting that full speed, like 250 kilowatt, 150 kilowatt, whatever your charge, car is charging at, you will be at tier two. But then if your car is towards the you know full, so if you are at like 70, 80% or even like 60% charge, then you might be getting lower than 60 kilowatt. That will make you fall on tier one. 
They also say that tier one applies anytime you're sharing the supercharger power with another car. So the thing that I said earlier about you know the, your car sharing the superchargers, so the supercharger A and supercharger B, that is also when you get tier one. But I did not know about this tier pricing until I started looking at my supercharging history and realized they, they build on different tiers. So that happened and then in Illinois, it was 28 cents per kilowatt hour. So as you saw in Ohio, it was 26. Illinois, the price went up just a little bit. In Iowa, we're way down to 23 cents per kilowatt. So it was much cheaper. But then when we got to Nebraska, the same tier pricing happened like Indiana, where they were charging based on minutes, not kilowatt hour. And then we got to Colorado. Colorado is 0.27. Uh, dot cents per kilowatt hour so that came back normal um, just just an interesting thought about that those states uh, so if before going on a trip maybe it is worthwhile to look at which states have the tier pricing and you know if you really want to save money you can maybe just top off frequently so that you are at that tier one pricing all the time I'll end today's video here. I hope this video has been helpful. I just wanted to share my experience about my long road trip and provide you with some tips on what I found to be helpful. I have a lot more Tesla videos coming and I'll also be making many videos on the new full self-driving software whenever that comes to my car. I'm hoping by next month sometime I will have that update so that I can share with all of you with what, what that update brings and how, how the car reacts with the new autopilot. I'm extremely excited for that, to be able to do basically navigate an autopilot within the city. So stay tuned for all of those videos. If you found today's video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, turn on the notification. Your support really, really helps bring more quality Tesla content in the future. And I have a lot more video coming, as I said. So please subscribe so you don't miss anything. With that, I'm going to take off for today. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you again for your time. Namaste.